morning everyone it's Pam from pouring artists international also known as paint I'm gonna do a little bit of alcohol inks in today's video I'm using a new surface that I want to try and I found it at Tuesday morning and it's adhesive faux metal vinyl very cool you can see the regular price $9.99, their price $3.99, and sometimes they'll have it on clearance as well. It's from American Crafts, and it's a huge roll of 12 inch by 48 inches, so you get quite a bit. And you have to be careful when you do cut it down because it will wrinkle. And you can see how reflective it is. You can see everything in it. There I am. How oh, it's like a funhouse mirror. So what I have done is I've taken it, I have cut it down to a small piece and I actually put it on a ceramic tile and taped it down because the problem being is you always have a curl. You can see that it curls up. Not that easy to work with when that happens. I'm going to, the reason I'm going to ink this is it is adhesive like a sticker. And you have the metallic background, which is great for metallic inks. But essentially, I'm going to cut it into pieces. And I'm actually going to place it onto these recycled Scrabble tiles. And eventually, what I'm going to have in bits and pieces is all these beautifully painted squares. Then I'm going to arrange them in a frame, like a patchwork, and have pieces of the matting cut out so that each individual one is its own little canvas, own little piece of art. So that'll be ultimately what the goal is going to be with this video. I will show you some technique. I was even lucky enough to find on clearance these giant um, Scrabble tiles. And I think they're about two by two. Let me see here. I grab my ruler real quick. A little over two, about two and a quarter squared. Yep. And you can see again, we have that glossy coat already on it. The back side. It, the glossy coat is on both sides, so it would make it great for alcohol inks. And I'll do the back side, and that would again make a beautiful uh, piece of art. Put it in a frame and have the matting come around it. Uh, garage sales. Great place. Thrift store to find things. I have these as future substrates. You know what those are, of course. Those are children's old wooden building blocks. But how cool would this be? Take the new saw that I got and try playing with that. And I'm going to cut slices. Look at the great surface to work on to do some alcohol inks in there. Same thing with this, even though it's a weird shape as a block. We have a square on one end, rectangle on the other and lots of room to cut slices from all the way down. Triangular, well there's rectangle on that end. Or we could slice it this way and get slices of triangle. And all of these were just pennies at a garage sale. This was also in a box of children's blocks, but this is also very similar in size and shape to the Jenga tiles. You can usually find those at thrift stores and garage sales. Do that just, you can do the whole piece right here. In this case, it's already got a shine on it. But my goal, I would probably cut slices. All right, we'll move those out of the way. So again, I've taken a piece of that vinyl and I've adhered it to a ceramic tile. Because it's curled, I wanted to make sure that the edges were taped down well. 
So we'll put that here, and I know you're going to see the ceiling fan. Sorry about that. You won't once the ink is down. I'm going to play with some of Ranger's new colors. Oh, while I'm on the subject of the vinyl, I found these too. Uh, Hobby Lobby. The Cricut Premium Vinyl. This is Holographic Mosaic. Look at the price. The regular price, $11.49. They must have been clearing out the aisle for a new brand because they had them on clearance for $2.87. I think I bought about 30 rolls, but all different styles, not just this. But how cool is this going to be with the holographic squares on there, putting some alcohol inks all over. Look at the design they have here. Wouldn't that be neat just to cut some things out and place it onto things. I know there's quite a shine there. This will lend itself well, I'm hoping, to the alcohol inks because it's a non-porous surface. So I just wanted to show you that. Tons of tiles, ton, tons of rolls of that to be working with. Okay. Colors I'm going to try today are new colors from the Ranger line that I think are so beautiful. Hopefully they'll work well together. Trying to see if you can focus in on that. Let me remove that first. There we go. Monsoon blue, a little bit of a gray blue. Love it. Of course, everybody that knows me knows that I'm a purple freak. So now we have Vineyard. That's a nice, rich, deep purple. And I am digging this yellow mustard kind of like. And of course, it's called Dijon. This is a fabulous color. Hopefully, these three will look well together. We'll see what happens. Remember, there's no mistakes with alcohol inks. I can always wipe it down. And I'm going to float on top of it, brand new, uh, one of the alloys. I'm going to use the silver, but it's called Foundry, and it's silver. And it works a little differently from the video I watched yesterday than the mixatives. This should dance on top once I, once I add some of the blending solution. So we'll get a little metallic back because the inks I'm sure are gonna cover the metallic substrate we're starting with. Okay, so I'm gonna put this down here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my blending solution and a paper towel just to wipe down the surface just a little bit, just in case from me touching it and putting the tape down. I probably got my oils on it and fingerprints and I don't want that. So I'm just going to clean the surface. And yeah, I am using a dirty paper towel. Why not? You can see all the beautiful colors that show up on here. And this will be a future mixed media class. I end up having a whole bag of these. And in fact, when I teach classes, in alcohol inks. I tell the students I better not see a paper towel in the garbage because I will take it out. If they don't want it, I will take it out. Uh, so again, I'm going to use the blending solution. I'll try that, but I also have my alcohol with a nice fine tip. I love working with that as well. You'll notice that there's not a whole lot of alcohol in the bottle. And the reason for that is if you are working with a full bottle, and as soon as you tip it, you can splash. You don't want to do that. You want to have a little more control of your alcohol. And this is a kind of like a dental tool with a very fine tip, sponge tip. Might throw in some dots. We'll see what happens. I'm going to do an all over color because remember, I'm just going to be cutting these out into small squares. And I'll move it around lightly with some canned air. The little tiny weed whacker, not weed whacker, the leaf blower that I have will make a little bit too much noise right now. So let's get started. I'm going to take some of the monsoon, the vineyard, and a little tip when you are using your inks and you open them up, put the lid that belongs to that right beside it in your workspace because you don't want to cross contaminate this Dijon onto the purple. You want to be able to 
put it on the correct bottle. So I keep all my bottles lined up with the caps right in front of them. And when I do use the alloy, like a mixative, it has the ball bearings in there, whatever is needed to help make, uh, mix it up. Doesn't take much, but just before you drop it and use it, make sure you give it another shake. So I'm gonna put that on the side too. All right, let's see what happens when we play. We're gonna put down some of the monsoon. Oh, look at that just spread out on its own. I'm gonna throw in some of the vineyard. I'm not gonna overdo it with vineyard because it looks very, very dark and rich. see what happens when we start moving it around and the Dijon I'm sorry if I keep knocking this my hand is very close to the pedestal there I love this Dijon I've done so many flowers with it already just look at that that's a sexy color it's working well on the substrate All right, I'm gonna take some of the blending solution and the canned air in the other hand. I'm just going to drop it. Now, some people don't like these, which a lot of people call them fingers. I don't mind them at all. I think it adds to it. And the reason you're getting those fingers is because I'm using the canned air. And it's the concentration of how fine this is coming out. And the force with which it's coming out. You can get rid of them. Just add a little more blending solution and work them out. You see how you can just work them out gently. I'm having issues with this canned air, so I'm actually going to utilize this brand new tool from Ranger. We'll have to try that. With my arthritis, I'm not sure how it will work, but it's basically like those little baby ear syringe things or bulbs. But depending on how you squeeze it, it can put out quite a bit of air and it's actually quite comfortable. Now you can hold it like this with your fingertips and your thumb and squeeze this way and it's not as forceful. But what's going to happen, I have terrible arthritis here in my thumbs, that's going to start to hurt and hurt soon. So I'm going to put it actually in my palms and put my thumb up and use my fingers. And you can still see. So. Let's add a little more blending solution around. Oh, see, I caught myself, ended up using my thumb anyway. Let's just spray it all around and see what happens. Add some more color, losing some of that blue. So we'll shake it on there. Let's 
drying out. So I'm just going to add a little more blending solution. And see, because there's less force, you don't get so many fingers. You do get some. Now I've lost too much color over here. I'll throw a little purple. Sorry about my arm going in the way. Oh, that's pretty. What these are, I call them tide lines, where they dry, they meet together, they dry. I love tide lines, but sometimes they can be a little too dark. So I'm just going to throw on some more blending solution. Now I've lost my Dijon. This is what's great though, all these layers that you can put in. Where the blue and yellow, now we're creating green. Whichever direction you put the nozzles, obviously the direction the air is going to go. So you can always be mixing and moving. Hmm, I like those colors. Get a little dark right there. Now I said I wasn't going to use that with my thumbs and I end up doing that. I think it's a control to have better control. Now you got to remember these are going to be cut down into small pieces. I think what I'm going to do is still a bit dark. See if I can find. I have alcohol in a spray bottle. Let's see. Beautiful. Got a mist a little bit right there, so I'm gonna have to put just a little bit right there. I'm actually going to take this paper towel and just hit it while some of it is just a little bit wet. Get a nice little texture. That always adds to it. Got a spot right there I don't like. This is interesting putting that texture in. So now I have some alcohol, 91%, in a spray bottle. I'm just going to come above it. Just give it a little mist. You can see that little mist just puts all these little dots all over. Oh, I like this. I actually think I might leave it that way. I want to try, just because I want to and because I can, this um, little tiny dental pick. 
sponge, not sure what you call it. I have a little dark area here. I think I'm going to purposely put in some dots. I'm going to put some of the blending solution just on my table. And I'm going to soak that in. So now I just got that wet with the blending solution. Let me move this up here. That's just adding a little bit more of the dots where I want them. Well, I do love the colors together. And I love how the blue and purple with the Dijon made this nice green over here. I like the texture of the paper towel. All right, I'm going to set this to dry, and before I cut it up, I'm actually going to give it a coat of Kmar varnish just to set the colors. It'll be easier to work with, and the inks won't rub off onto my hands when I cut them up. Okay, we'll see you soon. Okay, everyone, I'm back. One thing I forgot to add to this, which I wanted to try is the alloy the silver foundry so i'm going to shake it up we're going to see what happens now just like any alcohol ink i'm going to expect that it's going to move what i have here so i'm just going to I'm kind of going to go in a diagonal and see what happens so i'm just going to add a few drops diagonally and then i'm going to come back with the blending solution, wow, is that metallic -y. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's also picking up the colors underneath. And what's happening is these are kind of going to dance across the surface. I'm going to take the little plunger and kind of guide it and come back this way. Move it out a little bit. Oh, that's a gorgeous color. Sorry, I keep knocking that again. So it's making the colors that we used metallic -y. Oh, I do like it. I love these tide lines. I think you can honestly go overboard with some metallics, so I'm not going to add any more, I don't think, until I pick this up and look at it. I may change my mind. Sort of hard to see because it's already on a metallic surface. Oh, that's... I like that. When it picked up the yellow, it actually kind of made a metallic -y gold. Okay, we'll see how that dries. And we'll be back to cut them up. Hi everybody, it's Pam. I'm back from Pouring Artists International, also known as Paint. I am finishing up now that we have this beautiful alcohol inks on the, if you remember, on the um, the vinyl, very reflective vinyl, self-adhesive, which is awesome. This is it. I've taken it off the tile that I used it on and the, uh, the alloys, oh, amazing. Let me close this shade a little bit. Seems a bit too bright. See if that's any better. Beautiful colors. So vibrant. Now we're going to cut these apart. We were recycling them onto the tile, Scrabble tiles. 
I've already cut and trimmed a side off because I needed to test it first to see if my measurements were accurate, which they were off slightly. And I'll explain that to you shortly. But let me show you the five Scrabble tiles that I completed. Here's what they started out to be, and I actually used the back side. And here they are now. Took bits and pieces, small areas of this vinyl, and it stuck so beautifully down onto the tile. I did put a coat of the Kmar varnish just to stabilize the ink. Okay. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Because, okay, I want to show you the back of what I did. Now, please don't be overwhelmed. It can be very confusing to look at, but I will explain it. And it, this is certainly not something you would do. This is just all of my mistakes so that you don't do it this way. What I went and did was I measured the Scrabble tile and it was three quarters of an inch squared. I use this amazing ruler. I absolutely love this ruler. And it's from Tim Holtz Ideology. But what I love about it, get it here in the camera, is it has all of these lines, these increments. There's the quarter inch. There's a eighth of an inch. And what's nice is it has the line on the top and on the bottom. So when you are putting it up against your paper, let me try and find a blank paper. you can make your mark right there at the top and at the bottom at the same time. And you can go over by increments. It's just a wonderful tool to use. I'm always using that ruler. So the first thing that I did, you need to try and look past this. Let me put it down here. As long as I don't move it from there, you guys will be fine. First thing I did was I went and did the automatic three quarters inch squared. And I gridded it out. That ended up not working the proper way. And one thing I did realize, I'm gonna turn this over. Remember we had the alloy going across diagonally. So I wanted to make sure that the tiles were not all alloy. I'd like to get some of the alloy here and some of the color so what I did at first, whichever direction this was going, so this was coming from left to right, I needed to turn it over the right way. First line I drew here was from left to right. That just kind of gave me the guide of where the aloe was. But then I got to thinking about it, and you can see how wide the aloe was. So what I did was kind of just come up around I actually did it this way. I looked at the sheet. I actually put my pen underneath and I kind of drew out the area of the alloy. So that's why I highlighted this because this was kind of where the outline of the alloy was. So this was no longer any good. That one right there. So then I started gritting it out at three quarter inch intervals, which is what these black lines are. And I have X's here because these did not measure out to be three quarter inch square. I did not want to use them, but I also did not want to throw them away because I will use them for another project. So as I cut out a line of the three quarter inch square, that's where these came from. Now I know it's probably not that noticeable, but to me it is. It didn't come all the way to the edge. You can see right there, the edge is off just a, just a little bit and just a little bit off right there. And that kind of bothered me a little bit. So I decided to remeasure. So what you see here, I was trying to use a different colored pen, which was red. And I went beyond the three quarter mark
So here's where I'm measuring out one, two, three quarters. I did three quarters square. So now for the red marks, what I did is I just went over to another eighth of an inch. Okay. Hope I didn't lose you. I'm just showing you my mistakes so that you know not to do them. So I have these lines, but of course my red pen was out of ink for the most part. So I just scratched them in right here. And then I highlighted that. So these are going to be my cut lines. I scribbled out these X's because now I was able to use it because now I only have this little bit of edge here that I'm going to lose, but I'm really not going to lose it because I'm going to put it onto another project. These were also lost. So hopefully that didn't confuse you too much. All right, we're going to cut some apart just so I can show you how easy it is to put on the tile. Simple enough just to follow the lines. Let's see. I say that. All right, let me go to this small edge here. Don't throw that away. That's good for another project later. So now I want to disregard all these black lines and I'm going to this highlighted red line. So now when I cut these out and I put them on the tile, I don't have to worry about being so precise. I have some wiggle room. And you'll see how easy it really is. Let me get this up closer. Just the edge of my X-Acto knife. My, I say it's easy, but my glasses are not working for me that much. There we go. I just bend it over that way. And I grab one of these tiles. And you know what? I grabbed the wrong one. Nobody told me I grabbed the wrong one. That was my scrap. So now I have plenty of vinyl that I can just smack it on there and not worry too much about getting the edges because I know they'll be covered. As simple as that. Turn it over. Easiest way to cut. Now what I always have on hand is a scrap piece of paper, which I'm going to make another project with. I'm going to turn this over and you'll see what I've done with all the scraps. And for the most part, these are scrap pieces of paint skins from when I do other projects like jewelry making. And I know it looks doesn't look like much right now, but I'm going to put that down to the side because when I trim this, now when I trim, I don't go straight because this still leaves an edge as far as I'm concerned. I like to bend my scissors just a little bit and get right to the edge and cut. And you can see that's clean. And now I have this piece of vinyl. I'm just going to put it right down there willy-nilly. I don't even think about it. I just do it. Bend my angle my scissors in a little bit. much better having this cut just a little bit bigger than what the tile is. 
Okay, what I call this is serendipity paper. And that'll be another project. But you can see I have the metallic vinyl. I have all kinds of paint skins on here. So there we go. That was very easy to do. Now you wouldn't even have to put them on a tile if you don't want to. You can just cut them into squares or cut it into any shape before you take the adhesive off. But what I said that I wanted to do with it is to get it matted into a frame and have these pieces lined up like this. and have the matting around each square. That would be a dynamic piece of art. You can also do it on frames. I have these picture frames. Let me zoom back out a little bit. 25 cents. Found this at a garage sale or a thrift store. It's in great condition. Has the glass or the plexi. This happens to be a flat surface. Very flat. So all I'm going to do is repaint it to a color I like. Maybe brighten it up with a little light. A little metallic silver maybe. And then these actually fit perfectly right on there. I could space them out, or I could put them close together, all the way around. How beautiful would that be as a gift? And just to show you what a frame looks like finished that's in squares. Now this is not alcohol ink squares. This was done by my daughter, who's also an amazing artist. If you have a chance to go visit her website, she's working on. She's a collage artist in Seattle. It's MeganRavani.com, M-E-G-A-N-R-A-V-A-G-N-I.com. She does some amazing collage work. But this was something she made for me years ago for Christmas or Mother's Day or my birthday. I'm not sure which and it was on one of our cruises where we went snorkeling together. That's her and I. Love you, Megan. But you can see she did this out of clay. Let me zoom back out a little bit more. So you can see the concept of having squares around a frame and how beautiful that would be. She did that each individual inch of square, inch of clay. And she did the embossing with it with rubber stamps and then used a metallic powder. But something like this done with these alcohol ink squares, what an amazing gift that would be for any occasion. Okay, I think that's the end of that project. I will post once I get this framed. It's going to take some time to find a framer during this period in our world that will be able to do that with the small squares of matting. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know your comments. Like and subscribe. Once I get to a thousand subscribers, I can start doing these live and that would be a great deal of fun as well. Okay, we'll talk to you later.